Hi, everyone. Looking good. A lot of people here. How was the first day of Webcam Saga? Was it good? All right. I liked it. Um, so I'll be talking about code reviews. Uh, you can use the Webcam Zagreb uh, and the, the hashtag WCZG, uh, and you can follow me on Twitter if you like. So my name is Hannes van de Vreken. Like, uh, what was your name? You uh, introduced me very well. It's one of the best pronunciations of my name so far. Um, so my name is Hannes, uh, and I can describe myself with four emoji characters. I'm a Belgian. I like to run, uh, also cycling and swimming, but that's too much. Uh, I like to work with computers, like a lot of you people do, uh, and I love it. Wait, the last one isn't really an emoji character, right? Um, it's a company logo. Um, I work for a company called madewithlove.be. We have a lot of uh, remote employees as well. Uh, no one in Croatia so far, so maybe you should, you should apply. Um, we make things with love uh, using PHP and JavaScript. That's all you need to know. Uh, so I'll be talking about code reviews. Um, but first, let's outline the subject a bit. What makes a code review? Um, a programmer uh, writes some code, changes it, deletes it, adds some code. Um, and the programmer wants a second pair of eyes to take a look at it before it goes to the next stage being develop, staging, production, something, um, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so a second pair of eyes need to take a look at the changed code. Um, that can be anyone. Could be a peer developer, could be CTO, could be a manager, could be the lead dev. But it doesn't have to be someone with a more senior level than you. It can be a junior as well. So that's an important thing to, to say. Um, so what the peer does, is take, the peer is going to take a look at the code, what has changed, um, what has been added. Um, and then there's some kind of discussion. There's a, a comment on the line of code or a, a comment on the general pull request. Um, and then there's some kind of discussion back and forth between the programmer and the peer that is actually reviewing the code. Um, and there's some kind of loop in there. Uh, so after the discussion, the programmer goes back to his computer and his keyboard. Uh, or when you're, ro when you're uh, a remote employee, then you're basically all, all the time behind your computer. Um, and you make some more changes to the code, and then you submit it again. And then you have a discussion again. And that's an, a loop that only ends when the peer approves the pull request. He, he pastes some kind of. Uh, ship emoji character or something. And then you can actually hit the green button to merge the code. Um, so that's what a pull request is. Um, I said that there's a second pair of eyes that needs to take a look at the code. But if you're a one-man show, if you're a freelancer and you work for yourself, you don't always have someone else to take a look at, the, at your code. What you can do is um, do your own code reviews. So there's a quick tip here. Uh, if you do git add dash p, you can see all the snippets of, or all the small diffs of your changed code, and then you can review that before you actually commit it. Uh, what you also can do is uh, use different branches on GitHub and make pull requests yourself and review your code on GitHub or Bitbucket, whatever you want, um, so that you have a different environment where you take a look at your code. Instead of using your IDE to view your code, you can go to a site and then review the same changes. And then you will have a different mindset, and it will be like you're reviewing someone else's code. So you can do code reviews of your own code. Um, so why is this useful? Uh, why would we spend time on code reviews? Isn't that like waste time? We should all program and code and ship, ship stuff fast. Uh, so why spend time on that? Um, it's useful for a couple of parties, like all parties involved. First the one that is putting out the code, the submitter. Um, it's useful for uh, this person um, because he or she can then deliver better code through feedback from their peers. So their peers are giving feedback, and then you can learn from that. Um, uh, when uh, you're hitting the green button yourself, when someone ha else has approved your code request, you can hit the green button and merge your code and see it go to 
uh, development or staging or production, you actually get a lot more committed to the project. Uh, you get more responsibility, uh, responsibility for the code that you're putting out, uh, and you generally get more sense of uh, ownership over the, the code and the project. It's also useful for the person uh, that is reviewing it. It uh, doesn't have to be one person. It could be multiple persons, uh, people. Um, it's also useful for them because um, they can see the code that the programmer is putting out. Uh, it could be a different feature that the person is developing. Uh, the, the, the one that is reviewing the code could be working on a total diff totally different side on the project. It uh, could be working on onboarding, and the, the other person could be uh, working on billing or something. Uh, th totally different features, and they still know how all things are built in this project. Um, so you're actually looking at someone else's uh, code, how it's being built, and you know that when the project evolves and you have to go to onboarding, uh, the onboarding features in six months' time, you know how it's being built, because you have reviewed the code before. Um, so that's why it's useful for the people that are reviewing the code. Uh, you can also learn from uh, junior developers. If you're a senior developer and you're reviewing code from someone who is um, less experienced than you, you can still learn some new things about JavaScript or PHP. PHP has a ton of functions. I still don't know all of them. Uh, so I still learn every, uh, like every two days or so. I still learn a few new, fu few new functions in PHP just because I do code reviews. Um, it's also useful for management. Uh, this is where you have to uh, be awake and remember stuff because you will have to explain this to your management, why you should do code reviews. Um, you're doing code reviews, and the general thing is you get a lot of feedback between the different parties uh, that are involved, and the code generally gets better. Uh, you get feedback, you improve the code. Uh, so better code is main more maintainable code. Uh, what is good and mo more maintainable code that you can add more features more easily. Simple. So maintainable code uh, is good for the entire company. Um, it's also good because um, it straightens out the differences between the lead devs and the junior devs. They all become a lot more um, knowledgeable. Uh, they, they get more experienced just from learning from each other. So it, it raises the entire level of the entire team. So that's good for the management as well. <clears throat> so what should uh, each party do? What should a pr programmer do? Um, first, you get an assignment, an issue or uh, some, uh, a ticket on Trello or something. Uh, first, you should discuss it. Uh, what is supposed to be done here? Uh, is this filter sh supposed to be um, a min and a max filter or something? Uh, what is the purpose of this feature? Uh, what is the end goal? And how should we implement it? So first, you should discuss it with your peers before going to your keyboard and type it out. Um, that helps with um, uh, yeah, s small kinks between uh, small kinks in communication. If you have some um, miscommunication, then you can straighten that out before you actually type, type in some code. Uh, so that's also also part of the pull request process. Um, after that, you make the actual changes in code. Um, you add some tests, uh, some integration tests, and unit tests, whatever. Um, and then you can commit the code. Uh, how you commit the code is very simple. In small parts, you have atomic commits. Uh, each commit contains one change. Uh, if that's a code style fix, that's one, uh, one commit. If you have a new uh, REST endpoint, that's one commit. If you have a new CLI command, that's one commit. Um, if you add some breaking tests, that's one commit. You know, you create one breaking test, you push it uh, to GitHub, the CI, the CI environment will run it, and they will say, oh, yeah, this test fails. Uh, and then you can create new commit, commits, push it again, and see that the same test that you pushed has been fixed. So try to use small atomic commits. It makes the reviewing process easier because people can skip over the CS fixes 
uh, commits because nothing functional changes in CS fix commits. Um, the commit message uh, is also an important topic, but I only have 25 minutes, so I'll skip that for now. If you want to know more about that, just come to me later. Um, you can, as a submitter, um, you should add as much automated tools as possible. So I mentioned tests, I mentioned CS, uh, that's all, uh, those are all things that can be automated. You set up a CI service, uh, you make the CS fixer or the CS linter or whatever, and you make it run and fail if, if some syntax in the, is not okay. Um, next up, you pushed all the commits. Um, you should make a pull request, whether that's in Bitbucket or GitHub, doesn't matter. Um, on GitHub, there's a big box in there, in the form. It says description. A lot of people leave this empty. But it's this giant box just for a reason. Um, the reason is that you can fill it, fill it with a lot of details about the code, uh, the, the pull request. Um, there's a lot of details that go there, like design decisions. Why did you go for this design pattern above another design pattern, or why did you rename this variable to this value, uh, to this name? Um, you can also link or reference to other issues. You can say this is related to this issue, or this fixes that Bugsnag error report or something. Um, you can also um, yeah, link whatever you want. Uh, the more context you provide in the description box, the better because the reviewer is going to link, go to each link and see what the requirements were. And based on that, it's going to be uh, providing more, of, uh, more useful feedback. Um, last step for the submitter is to assign one or more reviewers. And this is where the reviewer steps in. What should the reviewer do? Um, or better, what should he or she not do first? What should he or she not do? Um, things that can be automated. Code style changes. You don't have to check that. You don't have to check if the multi-line array trailing comma thing is there. Uh, you don't have to check that. There's a linter for that. Um, you don't have to check if the test will succeed. There's a green, uh, green dot uh, behind the commit that says this commit is safe. Um, so basically, everything that is automated, you don't have to check that. Um, check if the code can be merged. If there are merge conflicts, that's something that you shouldn't do. GitHub does that. This code cannot be merged. Easy. No work for the, uh, for the reviewer. Um, something that I don't complain about is duplicated code. If there is duplicated code, so be it. It's for the reason of um, readability and for uh, clarity. If the code is more clear, if some code is duplicated, then so be it. Um, you can get notified of duplicated code with uh, special tools like Scrutinizer CI. Uh, they say uh, when some code has been uh, duplicated. As long as it's not three, three big files that are exactly the same, it's okay. Uh, just leave it. Uh, just keep an eye out uh, and try to contain it, but don't, uh, don't yell at the programmer that he has duplicated two lines of code. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's OK. Um, so basically, everything that can be automated, even duplicated code, you shouldn't be worried about it. There's tools for that. Um, the first step of the, of the pull request process is uh, discuss the feature. So the reviewer should not rediscuss the feature when the pull request is already been put out. You don't have to rediscuss the the requirements that should be discussed up front. Uh, it's a waste of time if you have to close the pull request after it, it has been put out. And there's a lot of steps in between. You don't want to put, uh, you don't want to do that over and over again, just because you didn't discuss up front. Um, so next up is things the reviewer should do. Uh, so there's a big description box with all of these details. Go to all the links, read all the details, read all the linked issues and the requirements of that and the bugs and the bug snacks and the, the, 
the trace, uh, how do you call that, bug traces and stuff. Um, follow that, read it, uh, and see how it, uh, how it sh think for yourself how you should solve this, and then go to the code. Go to the code and see, is this what I would have written? Um, so read the pull request description. Um, if you go to the code, um, take a good look at the naming, the names of the variables. Are they clear? Um, do, they, uh, do they contain what the, the variable name says? Um, and give some hints if it's not what you should have, what you would have named it. Uh, take a look at uh, design patterns. That's something that can be automated. A design pattern is very complex, and only humans can understand that. If AI, uh, where's the previous speaker? If AI can take over uh, design pattern stuff, then we're all out of jobs. We can all go home. Um, so design patterns is something that sh you should look at. Um, is this the design pattern that you would have used? Maybe not. Um, clarity is also very important. Is this code clear? Would you understand this code if you go to this onboarding feature in six months? Will you be able to develop the same feature? Uh, so code should be clear and documented and self-explanatory. Um, if something is not clear, ask questions. What does this variable do? Why is this here? Why did you use array map instead of array filter? Something like that. Ask questions, genuine questions. Um, if something is not clear, if you have to ask a lot of questions, then maybe something's wrong. Um, some things that can be automated as well is uh, missing things. Uh, for example, if you have to, uh, if you have a field in Elasticsearch, but you have to, Elasticsearch may not be your primary data store, so it needs to be in sync with your primary data store. Then if that field is not being synced to that uh, to Elasticsearch, um, you should say that. Like, this will not work, because if the model updates, then Elasticsearch will, not, will be outdated, so you have to update that, something that's missing. That's also something that um, is hard to spot with tests or with, uh, uh, or with automated tools. So yeah, when everything is OK, you can hit uh, approve uh, the new, uh, uh, what's the new uh, tool called from GitHub, uh, approve pull request. Uh, you can hit the green button and say approve pull requests, and then you add a ship emoji or something. Um, and then the, the, the person that is making the code changes can hit the green button, and everything goes to production, and everyone is happy, and management has its new features. Cool. Um, one last topic I want to talk about is language. You're talking to other people, uh, not bots. You're talking to people. So you want to uh, watch out with your language. Um, you can give compliments, sure. You can do a thumbs up or send a ship emoji or another sheep or sheep. And there's a sheep emoji. <laughs> Lame joke, I know. Uh, <laughs> so. You can use emoji, it's fun, it's, uh, it's joyful. Um, you should also not make it too personal. You, su you should not say, oh my god, I'm a big fan of your code. Uh, just, keep it, uh, just keep it real, keep it normal. We're all on the same level. We're all in this together. We're all working on the same project. Uh, you don't have to be a fanboy. Um, what is this? It's a shit sandwich. It's a made-up emoji. Um, <laughs> you should be suggestive. Um, you should not say, um, rename this now, or um, I think your design pattern decision sucks. Um, you should be human. You, said, you should say, uh, maybe this design pattern would, would have been better, or I would have called this variable this name, some suggestive lang language instead of uh, shouting or, or um, verbally being verbally aggressive or something. Um, the last slide is this one. Um, it's a shit sandwich. It's a technique I use. Uh, don't tell this to my coworkers. Um, 
I start off with a soft bun, uh, and then I say, oh, well, uh, you've done a great job here. Uh, it's a lot of code, but uh, you've been working all night last night to finish this. And uh, <coughs> so it's a, a start off soft, give some compliments. And then you say, what is wrong? Um, but this design pattern, nah, I don't think it's right here. Uh, maybe uh, you should maybe take a class in solid design patterns or something. It's, it's more. Eh? It's more shitty, but and then you st st top it off with a soft bun again, and then you say, "But overall, I think together, if you work together tomorrow, we, we can uh, we can still change this and we can still make this a, a shippable uh, feature." So that's the shit sandwich. You start soft, and then you give the <laughs> then you give the feedback, the critical feedback, and then you top it off with a soft bun. Uh, so <laughs> that's it for me. I would like to thank you.